Charlie Brown. Uh, I, I got a couple ways I want to go here. We'll just stay with my notes for right now. Uh, the last and the most important lesson that Charlie Brown learned, and for those that haven't been here, we've just been taking and dissecting a, a little clip of some of the things that Charlie Brown has learned in his journey of trying to figure out what Christmas is all about. I love the uh, character of Linus for a couple reasons. One, I really love his matter-of-factness when he presents the Christmas story. Also, I noticed this time, and I hadn't been noticing it in the other clips, but it's true in the other clips, is Linus was always right there for Charlie Brown. And that is so cool that we have people that will hang with us even when we're going through tough times. Amen. The other thing, and some of you may know this, you may not, Charles Schultz was very passionate and done a great job, a classic for, what is it, 1964, 50, 50 years, yeah, 50 years or 51 years has this been going and people still enjoy watching it. The one thing that's so cool that he put into the, the cartoon, that a lot, some people know, some don't, but if you'll notice when uh, Linus was reading the Christmas story, he said, and fear not, and he dropped his security blanket. Powerful statement. When you think about the Lord and think about what he's done for you and you think about what he's capable of doing for you, really when it gets right down to it, what do we got to fear? Nothing. And I know that's easier said sometimes than actually living it out. But, you know, how we live it out is to remind ourselves there's nothing to fear. Constantly renewing our mind that Jesus has got you. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, you're safe. You slid into a home plate and you'll never be called out. You're safe. And you will be safe in his arms always, no matter what is going on, no matter what life throws at you. And Charlie Brown began to realize that. One of the things, the lesson today is until you know the reason, and that's what we're talking about for the season, you constantly find yourself being sad, depressed, or disappointed. How many of you have at Christmas time ever felt sad, depressed, disappointed? Be honest, it's Sunday morning, okay? I think everybody's went through that. The antidote for it and the prescription is always the same. It never changes. And it doesn't matter if it's Christmas or any other day of the year. The, the answer is always looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is authored your faith and he finishes your faith. He, he, he puts something in you. And, and don't never let these words come out of your mouth. I, if you know Jesus is your Lord, never let these words come out of your mouth. I don't have any faith because that is unscriptural and untrue. The Bible says when God saved us, he gave every person that he saved. It doesn't matter from the least from years ago till now, whenever, he gave us a measure of faith. The, or, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I want to talk about that. He gave us the measure of faith, not a measure of faith. The difference is he didn't give Mike Russell a big old portion of faith and give Danny Dillard a small portion. He gave everybody the same faith. It took the same amount of faith for each person to be saved, and it's the same faith that the Holy Spirit puts in your heart. So your faith, so, so why is it that some people seem to have bigger faith? It's real simple. They exercise it. They believe they have it. They believe they receive it, and they let it out. But there's nobody. This helped me tremendously years ago when I began to realize that the same great men and women had walked with God prior to me had no more faith than I had. They had just exercised it more. And so what did that mean? I needed to exercise mine. How do we exercise it? You exercise it when you come to church. You exercise it when you speak healing over your family. Those things we talked about. When you believe God for those things, when you believe God, I mean, here's a way to exercise it. If you walk through any depression this year or during the Christmas season, exercise your faith and it will not be that way next year. And make the prep. I've been, I said this last week. I want to reiterate it. I know this is Christmas day, so the shopping's done. Hopefully if it's not, you're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you may have a problem if you haven't done it yet, guys. I mean, you know, you better get creative. <laughs> uh, I think Walmart's even closed today. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're out of luck on that one. But, but next year, when you think about Christmas, think about what you're going to do to make it easier on you. And don't get caught up, and this was the, one of the overarching points of Charlie Brown cartoon, is don't get caught up in the commercialization of Christmas. The Lord reminded me sitting there. He reminded me this morning when I was getting ready. And then he reminded me again, and, I, I don't, and this is why I was hesitant when I came up, because I didn't really know how to share it, but now here it goes. I think it'll make sense. When I was standing there, or watching that just now, the Lord reminded me again. When I was a kid, I, was, I don't even know how old I was. I was, I was real, you know, it was a different day. Um, I, I would have been about the size of my age or size maybe of my grandson Malachi. I, I, I don't remember exactly. But the Lord reminded me of this, and I still remember it, going down in the woods. Maybe I'd watch Charlie Brown. That I don't remember. All I remember is as a kid, the day before or the day of, evidently we didn't have a tree, and I went down in the woods and chopped down a cedar tree and brought it home. It was important to me as a kid. It wasn't important to me because somebody was putting pressure on me to do it. It was important to me because it was important to me. This is a key to having a successful Christmas and as stress-free as you can get it. Don't never let anybody put pressure on you that you've got to outperform, outcook, outbuy, outgive. That, that's, that takes the whole reason of the season away. And, and let's face it, there is a tremendous pressure to do everything I just said. Now, there's nothing wrong, and we teach this all the time, in giving. You can outgive for the sake of outgiving yourself from what you've done. And, they, hey, God will honor that. Bless, more blessed to give than to receive. But we don't do it as a competition because somebody else does it. We do it because this is what we want to do. A few years ago, I, I got cut off, but a few years ago, uh, <laughs> I wanted to buy everybody Christmas. And I did. The kids was hysterical about it. B.B. was depressed. <laughs> Not because she didn't get anything, but because of the money I spent. Why? Because, you know, I just felt like all of them needed guns and all kinds of stuff, you know. And we have a lot. How many stockings did we have hung? Sixteen. 16. Yeah. Yeah. So when Proverbs says, blessed is the man that's quiver is full or whatever it says in the old English... Uh, meaning that how many kids and grandkids you have. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, she put us back on a budget. The kids are no, now they're depressed. But, uh, <laughs> but see how easy it is to get depressed and undepressed? She's smiling. There, you know, I'm, I'm having fun. But just purpose in your heart. If you went through something this year with Christmas and something was getting your attitude, purpose in your heart to pre-plan and not do that. One of the things me and Bibi were discussing, and maybe the Lord will give us wisdom to how to do this. Uh, one thing we mentioned, I don't think we'll do, but we did mention it, is going ahead and doing Christmas on Thanksgiving and get both of them out of the way. But, you know, that may be a little bit of a stretch. I mean, we may not do that. But one of the things we did talk about when we was talking about taking our Christmas decorations down, when I grew up, we put them up. How many of you put your decorations up a couple of days before Christmas? <laughs> rather than two or three weeks. How many of you, did any of you live, uh, are old enough to remember when they put the Christmas tree up the day of Christmas? Yeah. The, it, it, but think about it now. We've, we start, I mean, as soon as Thanksgiving's over, hold on to your seat, here we go. We got Black Friday. You better get out of my way in Jesus' name. You know, and, and all of a sudden, everything gets in high gear. But that's not what God intended for us. So just go ahead and think about that. Not, don't think about it all year. I'm saying make you a note and come next year. Find out the one thing that stressed you and get it out of your life. You're in control. That's another lie the church has sold, that God's in control. No, he's not. He gives you control. God, God is God and he's sovereign and he can do whatever, but he gave us control of our lives. He said, I'm giving you the power to live. And so, anyway, just 
Think about that. The joy of Christmas can only be found in Jesus. Linus sh showed us that in Luke 2. Keep him in the center of everything you do. And I know you guys do this. I'm preaching to the choir, but how many of you know sometimes the choir needs to hear it? Amen. We need to be reminded. But I, and I believe every person in here understands what I'm saying, that, that, that God wants us to stop every once in a while and just think about what he's done for us. The problem we have today, I think, a lot of the problem we have today when it comes to Christmas is the enemy didn't, in some facets, he tries to take Christmas and take <laughs> Jesus out of the equation. But, but here's the lesson that you got to get. The enemy normally works this way. He puts so much in your life that you forget. Because see, just like in the garden, if Satan come to you and said, Jesus didn't come, Jesus is not real, you know how to combat that real quick. But when he puts so much on you that you forget, that's what we have to be aware of. Amen? The lessons we learned are, are some of the, the uh, share these two things. Charlie Brown line was, it isn't anyone, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Lina, sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. And then he reads Luke 2. To sum up the parable of Charlie Brown, the moral of the story, and here's what we've discovered as we went through this this month. Number one, think of others. You've heard me say this so many times, and, it's, and I have to remind myself is more than I'm reminding you, is when I think of Danny too much, depression, oppression comes. When I think of other, I, others, I get joyful. Nothing, when Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is receive, that's not just a cliche, it's not just a line, it's an absolute fact. When we begin to think of others, we take the focus off of ourselves, and this is what gives us complete joy inside. It'll give us peace. If you ever dealing with something, go find somebody to bless. I've had to do this to the point where I walk up to a total stranger and give them something just so I could get. Don't, it I don't even know if it was God directed. I believe it was Danny directed. But it brought fruit. Why? Because I've done it with the right heart. And you can. But always be thinking, and I believe you guys do this, but just a reminder. Get involved in doing something for the Lord. I'm going to make a very powerful statement. If condemnation hits you, you pray it off because that's not God. Because he doesn't, he doesn't give you that. It says, get involved in doing something for the Lord. Have to. I've never met a Christian that had the right heart and fully engaged with what God was doing in that hour that they may get down for a moment, but they was always getting back up. On the same token, I've met a lot of Christians that weren't involved that were constantly dealing with the mully grubs and the, and the fillings. Why? Focus on ourself. Amen? I don't believe for that for any of you, but maybe you have a neighbor that needs to hear it. Time and love are the best gifts you can give. Amen, amen, hua, amen, 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 amen. I can tell you my best part of Christmas, without a doubt. <coughs> Today being here with you, yesterday, last Saturday being with my family, tops any gift I got. I hung out and talked with Nick. He was one of the kids that hung out yesterday for a long time. Uh, the other ones had to go on to other things, but me and him hung out. We talked about this. We talked about this. We sat around part of the time. One time I about fell asleep. I mean, but it was wonderful. Why? Because we were just spending time with each other. We don't get that that much. The older I get, I heard, I heard this all my life, but the older I get, the more important I under, or the more I understand the importance of time. If you have someone in your life and especially if they're a busy person, you young folks listen to me. 
If you have someone in your life and they're older and they're busy, they're running a business, they're running a family, whatever the case may be, and they take time to spend 30 minutes, an hour with you, don't, don't ever regret that because they're imparting wisdom to you that you need to get to the next place. Look for the wisdom in it. There's so much. I love people. I have mentors in the body of Christ. And one of the things I can tell you, there's been a lot of people in my life over the years, but one of the things I can tell you for a surety, the guys that have had took their time to spend real time with me has made such an impact in my life. They could have wrote me checks and it wouldn't have meant near as much. They could have given me stuff, but just spending that time and imparting their life to me was, was, was priceless. When we give our time and love to people, it, it, it helps them, but it also helps us. And then the last thing is this, what we just talked about. Remember what Christmas is all about. I challenge you today to go home and read Luke 2. And I, this is what I always tell the church and the Bible college students. No matter where I'm at and we're talking about the word, I always say the same thing. When you read Luke 2, you don't try to memorize it all. That's not the point. The point is to let the Holy Spirit speak to you the one thing in the story that you need today. It'd take you 30 seconds to read it, a minute if you're a slow reader. But see what the Holy Spirit highlights to you. Luke 2, just read it. And sometimes he'll highlight things that you're like, wow, I know I've read it before. I've preached the sermon. I mean, this is one time I haven't read it this year. Linus did. <laughs> this morning I was reading it, though. And this is a kind of a sobering thought, <laughs> was to me, and I'm sure I've seen it, I've even talked about it probably before. But when I read it this morning, the one word that stood out in the story was Syria. What do you mean? What, what, why would that stand out? Well, I believe for this reason, just a, 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 just a gentle reminder that, in, that he came 2,000 years ago in the Middle East, and he's coming back. This is our urgent call. Anybody we know that don't know Christ, we need to share that. You say, well, when do you think he's coming back? I, soon. <laughs> Well, I've, I've been hearing that all my life. I know, and you're sooner than you was when you started hearing it. They've been preaching it. Paul dealt with it. In, they thought in Thessalonians almost 2,000 years ago that he had already come back, and Paul addressed that in the letters. Just don't ever be found in the camp that Peter talks about. In the last days, scoffers will come denying that he'll even come back. Where is his coming? I promise you this, and I believe everybody in here trusts me. I promise you this, just as sure as I'm standing here with a red shirt on and it's Christmas 2016 and Jesus Christ was born in a manger, he will split the eastern sky and come back for his people. That is a fact. You say, why do you think it's soon? Because for the, I hear one of the reasons, and you may or may not keep up with the news, but one of the, you need to know this. One of the reasons is, for the first time in the history of America, we just snubbed Israel. <coughs> Obama's farewell tour. And see, Americans are so proud, not you, those that don't know Christ. I used to be one of those. We're so proud, we thought we got great because we was America. <laughs> Us being great had nothing to do with us being American. It had everything to do is we aligned ourselves with Israel, and Genesis 12 is a covenant with God, and he'll never retract it. Psalm 89, 4 says, when I speak a thing out of my mouth, it will not be broken. He said, those that bless you, Israel, I'll bless. Those that curse you, I'll curse. I think one of the reasons the Lord spoke Syria to me is they're aligned with Russia now, the great bear of the north. 
you say, this is not a typical Christmas message. <laughs> right. I've never done anything typical. I've just always shared with you what God's sharing with me. Is this a sobering fact? Yes. Amen? So why would God give you this gift for Christmas? So that you would have an urgency come 2017 to make sure everybody you know knows Jesus. Not to fix their lives, not to try to straighten them out, <laughs> but to introduce Jesus to them. Pull a Linus. And when you get done telling them who Jesus is, just... God is good. He loves us. He gave us the gift of his son 2,000 years ago. He's coming back to get us. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord, none of this is fearful. It's rejoiceful. Because I don't care how good it gets here. <laughs> it doesn't even come close. Read the Christmas story today. Luke 2. Look at the faith of Joseph and Mary. We don't ever talk about Joseph. Look at the faith of Joseph. Wow, what a man of God. If there's ever been a man that should have ran, Joseph was it. And he's like, no, nope, I heard the Lord. His wife's pregnant, and she's telling him she's a virgin. And the Lord spoke through him to the angel, and he realized that it was real. Let the Lord speak to you this Christmas season. You say, I don't even seem possible that God would say that to me. All things are possible with God. Amen? Everything is possible with God.